Hello guys, now let's continue our topic. Okay, we just completed what let's continue our topic. This video, let's continue with the progesterone only pills or progestin only pills. How they are different from the previous oral contraceptive pills? Usually, oral contraceptive pills will have estrogen plus progesterone, but in this, we are only having progesterone derivatives. Okay, so they contain low doses of a progestin and no estrogen okay there is no estrogen only progesterone is there okay so it can be used in women who cannot take both estrogen and progesterone oral contraceptive pills okay so there are a lot of contraindications we, we just have seen right see uh, even a smoker should not take oral contraceptive pills okay a combination of estrogen plus progesterone and if a female with a dvt should not take oral contraceptive pills so in those females if they want a contraception there we can use this progestin only pills okay so they are also called as mini pills guys let's see their mechanism of action usually oral contraceptive pills what is the mechanism of action guys they inhibits the ovulation they makes the cervical mucus thickened and they makes the uterine endometrium out of phase so that implantation won't occur. Okay, there are three mechanisms of action. But here for progestin only pills or mini pills, the main mechanism of action is making the cervical mucus thickened. Okay, so please concentrate. The mechanism of action is thickening the cervical mucus. This is the main mechanism of action, not the ovulation inhibition. No. Now, see these pills can also prevent ovulation. Why? Because these are progesterones. Progesterone will give negative feedback to LH. So whenever there is no LH surge, there is no ovulation. True. So what is the only mini pill available in India, guys? The only mini pill which is available in India is a Serazate. Okay. See, it's a 75 microgram of a desogestrel. Now just think, desogestrel, is it a estrogen or progesterone? Definitely it's a progesterone. Which generation progesterone? Third generation progesterone, desogestrel. Okay. Now, what's the most common side effect, guys? The most common side effect is irregular menstrual bleeding. And usually, these mini pills are not advised for females who had a gestational diabetes mellitus. Why? Because I have already said that progesterones have effect on carbohydrate metabolism that will cause hyperglycemia. Okay. If the patient is already having hyperglycemia, don't give these pills. Okay, now let's continue with the progesterone injections. Okay, only progesterone is there and we are giving the injection. For example, see, you are asking the female to take oral contraceptive pills every day. But this female is no, is like some, somewhat lazy. Okay, she is not active female, she is not educated, she is not responsible. So she is not taking the oral contraceptive pills every day. So what may happen? At any time, she can get the pregnancy. Okay, if she is missing a pill, that's very dangerous that she can become a pregnant. So, for those females, we can give this progesterone injections. Why? What's the important? What's the main important thing is you know she can take it for every three months. Okay, once in three months she can take. Okay, no need to take every day. Once in three months. And what's the uh, like you know most popular progesterone injection, guys? It is DMPA, Depot Medroxy Progesterone Acetate. Okay, Depot Medroxy Progesterone Acetate are uh, taken via IM road and dose is 150 milligram. You can see here. Okay, Depot Medroxy Progesterone. Okay, 150 milligram. Okay, so it should be taken once in three months. What is the mechanism of action, guys? So such high concentration of progesterones will inhibit that directly will inhibit ovulation. Here it's not something like you know uh, makes the cervical mucus thickened. No, that's for the pops, mini pills. But here depot preparations will directly inhibit the ovulation. What are the other benefits, guys? See, especially these progesterone injections are mainly helpful in those females who are having a sickle cell anemia. For examples in the females who are having sickle cell anemia, especially these contraceptives are very good. Why? Because this DMPA decreases the sickling of RBCs. So what are the best contraceptive in sickle cell patients guys? It is the DMPA. And what is the best contraceptive in epileptic patients? If the patient is, ha if the patient is an epileptic patient, he is throwing scissors. So, Usually, this DMPA decreases the threshold for the seizures. So, if a patient is an epileptic and she wants a contraception, you can give 
DMP away because this DMP decreases the seizure occurrence in epileptic patients. That's something good. Now, should be used in female if she want to delay her pregnancy for at least one year. Okay, if she if, she, if she's willing to uh, like you know if she's saying that doctor I don't want to uh, get pregnant for the next one year. After one year, okay, I I will be I will get the pregnant for the next one year. I'm not having any plans for getting the pregnancy. So in that conditions, you can use this uh, DMPA. Okay, now it can be used in, even in lactating females. It's safe to use in the lactating females. But important disadvantages are see these are the important disadvantages: osteoporosis, weight gain, diabetes mellitus, and it takes uh, almost one to one point five years. Almost one to one point five years after for the reversal of the fertility. Okay, after the stoppage, after the stoppage, it takes almost one to one point five years for the reversal of fertility. Too much long time. Okay, so. These are some important points about only progesterone injection. Okay, or simply progesterone injections. There is no estrogen component at all. Okay. Now, after this, let's discuss about progestin implants. Okay, we have discussed progesterone only pills, pops or mini pills. Okay. Now we just completed progesterone injections, DMPA. Now let's see progesterone. implants not injection implants okay see this is a progesterone implant okay which is uh, kept under the skin but one of the most uh, famous progesterone implant is implanon okay implanon is a progesterone implant which progesterone is present in this implant guys it is 3 keto desogestrel is present okay third generation progesterone 3 keto desogestrel of total 68 mg okay not micrograms 68 mg of progesterone is present in that implant and that implant is kept under the skin so every day it's like you know little bit little bit amount of progesterone is getting into the circulation and this progesterone will prevent the pregnancy from happening Okay, so what what's happening? See, every day there is a release of sixty seven microgram per day. Okay, sixty seven microgram, not milligram. And these implants can be replaced every three years. But what is the important point, guys? Important point is when compared to all the other contraceptive methods, implant have least failure rate. Implants have a least least failure rates. Okay, and what is the mechanism of action? I have already said high dose of progesterone will inhibit the ovulation okay and this uh, implanon implanon is replaced with the nexaplanon okay they are one and the same composition is absolutely the same okay but what is the difference guys implanon is radio lucent under x ray you cannot find out whether the female is having any implant or not but nexaplanon is radio opaque okay you can find out that the female is having an implant now see this is best suited best suited for a female who want to delay her pregnancy Okay, if a female is willing to delay her pregnancy for the next two to three years, then she can go with the implant. If she is willing to uh, have an infertility for the next one year, then she can go with the DMPA injection. Okay. Um. Next, let's continue, guys. Let's see some important points about the implanton, guys. This implanton can be used in lactating women. Yeah, it's a safe in lactating women. and it can be used immediately postpartum okay immediately postpartum you can use this implanton and no adverse effect on bone density why i am saying this why because dmpa have the risk of osteoporosis dmpa have the risk of weight gain and uh, diabetes mellitus but this implanton no adverse effect on bone density now in which conditions you are not supposed to use this implants it's for everything it's the same it's a undiagnosed vaginal bleeding if there is undiagnosed vaginal bleeding don't use any methods of contraception okay especially hormonal methods of contraception don't use okay now if there is a, a breast cancer don't give because see even in the studies it was shown that okay there is an elevated risk of breast cancer in the persons who are using progesterone only implants or progesterone injections or any other hormonal iud's even though their composition is different but there is an increased risk of breast cancer when a person is using either implants or injections or ocps or any other hormonal iud's okay true and the person is having any liver disease don't use it why because there is no metabolism of this progesterone and active thrombophlebitis or thromboembolic events also in these conditions active conditions also you are not supposed to use any implants okay why because they can aggravate the condition okay i hope uh, 
the video is uh, helpful now let's continue in the next uh, video let's mainly discuss about the intrauterine contraceptive devices thank you